A brand new laser system is now firing into the upper atmosphere, interacting with oxygen and nitrogen molecules, and people across the country are feeling something. At the same time, auroras are showing up, and people are capturing strange lights on camera. The University of Alaska just revealed this new Rayleigh LiDAR. It studies the ionosphere's D region, the same region that affects radio waves, auroras, and electromagnetic activity. And I have a joint appointment in the Geophysical Institute. A next generation ionospheric radar. Each observatory has a set of five instruments in it that are mainly focused on looking at the, the background atmosphere. The ionosphere that the radar is studying is embedded in. Both the Europeans and uh, the American side of this project are interested in studying the upper atmosphere at altitudes above 100 kilometres, up to several hundred kilometres. And those are altitudes where spacecraft operate, those are altitudes uh, that radio communication. Anytime energy enters the atmosphere, whether solar storms, auroras, or research beams, people report heightened sensitivity. It could be EMF fluctuations, pressure changes, or just the atmosphere shifting. This beam at University of Alaska Fairbanks reaches the D region, the lowest layer of the ionosphere, where radio waves bend, weaken, or get absorbed. That's the layer that changes the most during auroras, solar storms, and large atmospheric disturbances. According to the official release, this new LIDAR will help interpret data from HARP's measurements of the D region, not replace it, complement it. Meaning, two advanced systems will be studying very soon the same atmospheric layer using systems at the same exact time. In Alaska Fairbanks official statement, they say this, Having two LIDARs separated by a great distance can allow scientists to study weather and climate of the upper atmosphere and its variation over regions, said Assistant Professor Michael Rodewig at the LIDAR Research Laboratory. When this layer changes, you'll see the sky changes, aurora spread, radio signals behave differently. The atmosphere feels more energized and thousands of people report sensitivity due to ionospheric disturbances. But here's what we really need to understand. This new LIDAR system works by firing light upward and watching how oxygen and nitrogen molecules scatter that light. This is called Rayleigh scattering. The same thing that makes skies blue and sunsets red becomes a way to measure energy, temperature, and motion in the atmosphere. When multiple systems measure the same region, here's what can happen. The atmosphere can shift quickly. And the question is here, have you been noticing shifts very quickly in the atmosphere around you? Tell us all something we haven't heard in the comment section and leave your location because I'm very interested to know. The addition of this LIDAR will greatly advance the ability of the sub auroral geophysical observatory to contribute to our understanding of the upper atmosphere said jessica matthews director of harp and the university of poker flat research Ranch. so what else is happening that you really need to know riley lidar uses electromagnetic radiation basically a laser to measure how the upper atmosphere is behaving and they say EMF in this context doesn't necessarily mean danger. It just means electromagnetic interference, like what affects radio waves, GPS and communication signals, and it can cause static in radios. And it can change how signals travel through the air. And that's what scientists are studying about this. But what if there's more being studied? I know some of you feel there's more going on than just radio waves and atmosphere, and I hear you. <sighs> I'm not saying that this technology is physically harming people. What I'm simply saying is that humans are very in tune to their environment. When the atmosphere shifts, people notice it. 
Some feel pressure, some feel energy shifts, and some just feel aware that something is happening. And what concerned people that all this was going on in the atmosphere, they were wondering, was this disturbing any volcanoes or causing seismic activity? There's no evidence right now that that's the case. But we have the University of Alaska Fairbanks actually moving in to look at the volcano in Alaska right now. The Mount Edgecombe Volcanic Field, which includes Mount Edgecombe, um, sits just outside Sitka, Alaska. And it was previously considered dormant, hadn't really been doing anything, and then a few years ago it started inflating and we started to see a lot of seismic activity. My name is Claire Puglio. I'm a PhD student here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks at the Geophysical Institute and in the Geosciences. From what they said about this volcano, it seems like it's slowly awakening. But if nothing strange is going on there, then there shouldn't be anything to worry about, right? That aurora in Alaska is definitely dancing to the sky. But a local resident heard something that was pretty weird around this time. That is so fucking creepy. can't figure out what it is right now. Let me know what you think, but that's why you need to just stop and subscribe right now because we're going to investigate further into this and get details from people in that area and people all across the world. But let's move into the next steps of what people want to know due to what was felt all around us. Now, a lot of you have asked, what can you do at home when the environment feels active or when your senses feel more aware? Not because of this research, but just in everyday life, electronics, devices, or environmental noise. So I reached out to a Navy engineer who specialized in electrical systems that I've been known for three years, not to talk about LIDAR or any research, but about everyday EMF from phones, routers, Wi-Fi, TVs, static electricity that's moving through your house. Listen to this. Scientists are drawing a correlation between these, um, these times of exposure and, and, and just how, as a human species, we're having to adapt. Now we're being exposed to just uh, almost seemingly unlimited band of frequencies. Now that they're talking about to break down the even further aspect of what we're dealing with. So what we've, t what we've done is instead of a box, you can make composites or, you know, small items made from the blend of iron oxide, steel, brass, shungite, and crystal powders that are all encased in an epoxy resin, and they produce the same effects and are able to transform the harmful wireless fields from cell towers, smart meters, smartphones, internet routers, and your television into more beneficial energy for you and your plants and pets. So one of the ingredients that we use in there is shungite. Shungite is a rare mineral. It's believed to come from an asteroid that can only be found in one place in the world, and that's Corellia, Russia. It's the yep. only mineral of its kind that contains fullerenes, which have been proven MFs and also used for cleaning. Yeah, I remember I did the studies on that, and I was like, it said America has some to like low quality shungite and Russia has some of the real shungite. Elite shungite, yes, Javon, can yeah. you explain what makes it different from the regular shungite? Elite shungite has a higher content of, sh of the shungite uh, carbon within within the sample. We're looking at photos that I took of Tavon as he was creating it. So we take the different powders, um, uh, iron oxide, brass, shungite, steel powders. Uh, the reason why they're in powder form is because that makes it more powerful because the powder has more surface area than if we were to use big chunks of those metals. There's a moment when it's curing where it might let off a little bit of vapor, but we open the windows and mm -hmm. everything. So Harmonizing products and what goes into it. There's a re specific reason why we use these minerals. And also when these minerals are immersed in that 5G field where you're living at, it's taking those that field and is transforming it in the local area to something that's more harmonizing. And that's exactly what we say. It transforms the field and you can place it all around yourself and your environment. 
for the best effect. So then uh, we have on the upper right, that was the University of Pennsylvania test. You can just type in, uh, I think, organ accumulator. It wasn't they, they, in, the, in the study. This is the University of Pennsylvania. Cosmic energy is being accumulated. That's what they said in the study. But basically, water is that's inside, you know, the box with the plant with the little seeds is absorbing this energy. The, uh, the pyramid study. Yeah. So this is why we make pyramid shaped. Yeah. So this is this was what I was talking about earlier. The Russian science scientist, Professor Alexander Golod in the late 90s, early 2000s. He was a Ukrainian former defense contractor. Uh, scientists performed pyramid research on experiments that use expensive military helicopters and equipment. That and what he found, he's being funded by the University of Moscow, by the way. Um, they created this multi-story uh, uh, pyramids, uh, several of them, on the outskirts of Moscow. In fact, if you type in Golod pyramids, you get all kinds of photos of these pyramids. They stand to this day. Now, what they found is a couple of interesting effects by having this this non-conductive plastic pyramid built. They took helicopters, they flew around it, and they found that there is a measurable ion column coming from the top of the pyramid all the way up into the ionosphere. That the shape of the pyramid had a function. It interacts uh, with the energy of the Earth, uh, directs energy out through the tip of the uh, to affect the environment around it. A lot of you have been feeling how everything has been going in the world. And you've asked me, what do I personally use when the environment feels more active? And I put all that in the top of the comment section. You can go there and find everything that you've been asking for. And that right there has kept me feeling calm, feeling more relaxed. And I just hope to spread that energy with you uh, and that things go well for you and your family, your animals, your pets. But if you got this far, I'm not even begging you. I'm just saying your survivability, definitely. I put it here and it relies on that. Not even showing you. Go watch it right now.